Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today we're learning how to make a turtleneck tee. Nothing beats a good turtleneck sweater in frosty weather, but sometimes you don't want to be too bundled up for those occasions. We've got you covered. Well, uncovered, but you've got the idea. Speaking of, if making modern crochet wearable sounds like a good idea to you, you've come in the right place. We've got hundreds of modern crochet designs with even more coming, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on with the show, so without further ado... For this project, any category for yarn will work, but I used a total of 400 grams of yarn, and that's 900 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you want to tackle any crafty projects in the new year. We have quite a few new designs that we want to try out, but they're pretty tricky, so we'll get to them. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. Double crochet. And herringbone double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 6mm hook, and start off by making a chain that reaches from the top of our shoulder down to where we want the bottom of this top to be, keeping in mind that we will have a bottom band. So I need a chain that is 18 inches or 45 centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 68. And now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on the first row for our three row repeat. So our first row is going to be a herringbone double crochet row. Start off by blocking on that last chain. And we're going to do a chain two. That chain two doesn't count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain. And from here, we're going to yarn over preparing for our herringbone stitch row and then into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook we're going to insert with our herringbone double crochet. So go ahead and bring your hook down and into that chain, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook we're going to pull our first loop underneath our second loop to get two loops on our hook. And then when we have those two, we're gonna yarn over, pull through just the first loop for another two loops, yarn over, and then pull through both of those loops on your hook. Let's do that again. Yarn over and into your following chain, insert your hook into there. Yarn over, pull through that first loop to get a total of three loops on our hook. When we have these three loops, we're gonna be pulling that first loop underneath our second loop. We get a total of two loops on our hook. And then when we have those two, we're gonna yarn over, pull through just the first loop to get two loops again, and then yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And now that we have that, we're gonna be doing just one more together. So just like the other ones, start with the yarn over and insert your hook into that following chain. From there, we're gonna yarn over and pull through to get three loops on our hook. Then we're going to pull that first loop underneath our second loop to get a total of two loops on our hook. From here, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first loop, and then we're going to yarn over and pull through the two loops left on our hook. And that's it. From here, we're going to continue to put one herringbone double crochet stitch into every chain. All right, so we've just made our way all the way down with our first herringbone stitch row. Now the second row that we have in our three row repeat is going to be another herringbone stitch row, so let's get that started. Now starting every herringbone stitch row, we're going to do a chain two. There's one, there's two, and now we're gonna flip our work. 
Now this is going to be done exactly the same way as the first row, so we're just going to do the first few together. So we're going to start with the yarn over, and then we're going to insert our hook into the last stitch from our previous row. So go ahead and insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through. Once we have those three loops on our hook, we are going to pull that first loop underneath the second to get two loops on our hook, and then we're going to yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through both loops. Now that's the first one all finished up, let's just do one more. Yarn over and insert your hook into that following stitch, pull through. Well, we have three loops on our hook, we're going to pull that first loop underneath our second, and then when we have two loops on our hook after that, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through the last two loops, and that's it. Continue to put one herringbone stitch into every stitch. We have just finished up our row two or our second herringbone stitch row. And now our third row and our three row repeat is going to be a double crochet row. So from here, all we're gonna do is chain three and flip our work. Now to do a double crochet, all we're gonna do is yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, yarn over, pull through. And when we have three loops on our hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, Yarn over, pull through two. Let's do this again. Yarn over, insert your hook into that following stitch, and pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, and pull through two. And continue to put one double crochet into every stitch. All right, so I am back with my double crochet row. So we have just done our first herringbone stitch row a second herringbone stitch row, and then a double crochet row. Now for the remainder of this piece, it's going to be a repeat of these three rows. And right now we're working on our shoulder section, so we're just going to keep repeating these three rows with no increases and no decreases until we get a shoulder width that we like. So placing the first row about two inches past the tip of our shoulder, working all the way until we reach the base of our neck, making sure that we meet back right after our second herringbone stitch row. I'm just going to get started on the next row off with you guys and let you guys do the rest on your own. So all together we should have one, two, three rows. Our fourth row is going to start with a repeat of row one, so our herringbone stitch row, so let's get that started. Start with a chain two and flip it work. Now just to do the first herringbone stitch together, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, pull through. When we have those three loops on our hook, we're going to pull the first loop underneath our second. When we have two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through the first, and then yarn over and pull through both. And that's it. Go ahead and get this shoulder portion all finished up, and then I will meet you back. Alright, so I'm back with my shoulder portion, and I have a total of 14 rows, and this width is just about 7 inches or 18 centimeters. Now from here, we're going to start working on our neckline, which is going to be pretty simple. We're all going to start off by inserting our stitch marker into the stitch where we want our neckline to start. And we do want to make sure that this is right where the base of our neck is because we don't want this neckline to be too deep. So all I've done is inserted my stitch marker into the fifth stitch from the top, and that's just about an inch or two centimeters. Now from here, we're going to continue on with our row sequence. So the next row that we should have, since we all should have ended on our second herringbone stitch row, is a double crochet row. So at the end of the row, since we all should be along the bottom, chain three, flip our work, and then put one double crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up until we reach the stitch right before our stitch marker. All right, so I've made my way all the way up with my double crochet row all the way until I've reached my stitch marker. And now all we're going to do from here is continue on with our row sequence working away across our chest to the other side of the base of our neck. So since we just finished our double crochet row, our next row is going to be a herringbone stitch row, and then a row after that is going to be another herringbone stitch row, and then repeat those three rows. I'll meet you guys back once we finish up a double crochet row that ends along the top. Now a really quick tip, every other double crochet row is going to end along the bottom, so just make sure that you're spacing it out correctly so that our double crochet row ends along the top, just like how this one does, so that we can go ahead and just make a chain that works up for the shoulder without doing any cutting and tying. 
I'll meet you guys back once we have this section all finished up. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up my neckline rows. I now have a total of 27 rows and my width is now just about 13 and a half inches or 34 centimeters. And now we're gonna do our other shoulder. So since we all should have ended on a double crochet row that ends along the top, what we're gonna do from here is make a chain, the same amount of stitches that we skipped along the side. So if you guys have my numbers, I skipped five stitches here. So along this end, I'm going to make a chain of five. And now that I have my chain, all we're gonna do is do the next row in our row sequence and then just continue to do our row sequence until we have the same amount of rows as our first shoulder portion. So all we're gonna do from here is our next row should be a herringbone stitch row. So just block off that last chain, do a chain two, yarn over, and then into that chain that we blocked off or the third chain from our hook, insert with our first herringbone stitch. And then that's it. We're gonna continue to put one herringbone stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain two, we're going to do our second herringbone stitch row. And then at the end of that row, chain three, and then a double crochet row. Continue to repeat those three rows with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as our first shoulder portion. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I am back and my second shoulder portion is all finished up. Now I have a total of 41 rows and my width is just about 20 inches or 51 centimeters. And now all we're gonna do is make a second panel that is exactly the same. So just to talk you guys through it, make the same chain that we made when we started off this piece. We're going to do two herringbone stitch rows, a double crochet row for the same amount of shoulder rows, skip the same amount of stitches and then do the same amount of rows as our neckline. And then we're going to make the same chain as the amount of stitches that we skipped and then do our second shoulder portion with a chain up of one and cut. And once we have that second panel all finished up, I will meet you guys back so we can seam everything together. All right, so I am back and my front and back panel are all finished up. Now that we have them done, we can seam our shoulder. So what we're gonna do is place them on top of each other and then we're gonna start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of the front and into the corner stitch of the back panel. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and all we're gonna do is single crochet across the tops of our shoulders. And we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every side herringbone stitch row, and then two single crochet into every side double crochet row, so let's get that started. Now doing the first few single crochets should start off the same for everyone. So the first side row that we should have within the front and the back panel is a herringbone stitch row. So all we're gonna do is gonna find that top loop within the front panel, insert your hook, find that same top loop for that first side row within the back panel, insert your hook, and then from there, all we're gonna do is single crochet it together. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then we should have another side herringbone stitch row right after that. So we're gonna be putting one single crochet into the tops of that one as well. So into the front panel, find that top loop and insert your hook. And then into the back panel, find that top loop, insert your hook, and then single crochet them together. Now the next side row that we should have should be a side double crochet row. So we're gonna be inserting our hook into the top of that loop Find that same side double crochet row within the back panel, insert your hook into the tops of there, and then single crochet once. Let's do that again. And since this is a side double crochet, we're gonna be doing one more, and this second one should be a little bit easier since it should be gathered. So into that same top loop within the front, and same top loop within the back. And then from there, just single crochet them together. And that is it. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more shoulder rows left to work into. Do a chain up a one and cut and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that our shoulders are all seamed up, we're ready to seam our sides. So the first thing that we're gonna need to do is insert our stitch marker into the stitch where we want our sleeve to start. And I have actually inserted my stitch marker into the 15th stitch from the top. And that's just about five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. 
Now I do need to keep in mind that we need to insert a stitch marker into a stitch that's in multiples of five. But once we have that all finished up, we're gonna make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out, meaning that the shoulder seams that we have is still flipped along the outside. And then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. So now that our hook is into the corner, we're going to be inserting our yarn onto our hook. Pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And now we're going to do a single crochet seam. So let's start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert your hook. Find that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet them together. Let's do this one more time. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, and then into the next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet, and that's it. Keep doing this until we reach our stitch marker. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. Okay, so now that everything is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to start working on is our sleeve. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning all of the seams that we have are along the inside. And then we're going to start by inserting our hook into the stitch that we have that's nearest to our side seam. Then we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook and pull through. Now from here, we're going to make a chain the length that we want our sleeve to be, and since I want mine to be short sleeves, I'm gonna be making a chain of 10, and that's three inches or eight centimeters. And for our sleeve, we're going to be doing the same three row repeat. So the first row is going to be a herringbone stitch row, so start by blocking off that last chain, and then do a chain two. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert with our first herringbone stitch. Just like that, and then continue to put one herringbone stitch into every stitch. Alright, so now that we made our way all the way down with our first row, which was a herringbone stitch row, we need to connect it into the base. So connecting our first herringbone stitch row, we're always going to connect it into that second stitch. So let's all start by counting up one and then two. Now into that second stitch, insert your hook with one slip stitch to close off this first row. And then just to work our way up to the next row, we're gonna be inserting our hook into just that next stitch into the base. So find that next stitch and slip stitch up just one. After we do that slip stitch, we're gonna flip our work and then make our way all the way down with our herringbone stitch. And now that we've made our way all the way down with our second herringbone stitch row, our third row is going to be a double crochet row. So since we're along the edge and starting our double crochet row, all we're going to do is chain three and flip our work. Now from here, we're going to be putting one double crochet into every stitch. So I've just finished up our row three or our double crochet row and I'm gonna show you guys how we're going to connect it. So we're gonna start by counting up the next two available stitches into the base. So there's one and then there's two. Slip stitch into that second stitch into the base to close off this row three. Now from here now, our rows are gonna be exactly the same. So two herringbone stitch rows and then a double crochet row with no increases and no decreases. But since this is an odd number of rows, the next set of three rows is going to be connected differently than the three sets that we just did. So I'm just going to do the next three rows with you guys to show you how it's going to be connected into the base and then I'll let you guys repeat all the way around. So we just finished up one, two, and three rows. Getting started on our fourth, which we're going to start with our herringbone stitch row, we're going to be slip stitching up just one stitch. So find that next stitch into the base slip stitch up just one, flip our work, and then do our herringbone stitches all the way down. When we reach the end of this row, do a chain two, flip our work, and then do your herringbone stitches back, and then I'll meet you back so that we can connect it into the base together. All right, so we are back and we have just made our way all the way down with our row four, which was a herringbone stitch row. At the end of that row, we did our herringbone stitch back, and to close off our row five, we're gonna connect it into the base together. 
So how we're going to close off our row 5 is by slip stitching it into that second stitch into the base. So there's one, and then there's two. Into that second stitch into the base, we're going to insert our hook with a slip stitch to close off row 5, and then we're going to get started with row 6, and then from there it's just going to be a repeat of rows 1 through 6. So our next row in our 3 row repeat is going to be a double crochet. So we just need to slip stitch up the next two available stitches into the base so we can get the same height. So into that next stitch into the base, there's one. Into that next stitch into the base, there's our second slip stitch. Flip your work and then put one double crochet into every stitch and then that's it. Go ahead and keep repeating these six rows, which there aren't going to be any increases or decreases. They're all just connected into the base a little bit differently making our way all the way around, and I'll meet you back so that we can seam our sleeve together. Alright, so we've made our way all the way around with our sleeve, and we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, so now we're going to seam it. Now this seam is going to be done the same way that we seam the sides, so just a regular single crochet seam. So first start off by making sure that our work is flipped wrong side out so that all of our seams can be along the same side. Once soon our work is flipped over, we're going to be inserting our hook into that first stitch into the front panel, and then into that first stitch into the back panel, and then single crochet them together. There's the first one done, we're just going to do one more together. So just find that first stitch into the front panel, and then find that first stitch into the back panel, and then single crochet, and then that's it. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into and then do a chain up of one and cut. Once we have that, do the same thing that we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that both of our sleeves are all finished up, the next thing we're gonna do is our turtleneck. So we're all gonna start by making sure that our work is flipped right side out now, and we're gonna start by doing a single crochet row along our neckline. So start by inserting our hook into any one of the side rows that we have along our neckline, and insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And for the single crochet row, since we have a few side rows to work into, just like how we did when we seamed our shoulders, we're gonna be putting two single crochets into every side double crochet, and then one single crochet into every side herringbone stitch row. So let's just get the first few started. Now my first side row that I have right here is a side double crochet row. Now if yours is a herringbone stitch row, that's completely fine. You're just gonna be doing one single crochet. But since mine's a double, I'm gonna be inserting into there with two. So here's one, and then into that same top loop with my second single crochet. Now my next two side rows that I have are two herringbone stitch rows, so I'm just going to be putting one single crochet into the tops of those. So I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook with a single crochet, find my next top loop for my next herringbone stitch row, and then single crochet. And then that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we reach our shoulder portion. Then we're just going to be putting one single crochet into each of those stitches, and just continue on with that sit, and just continue on with that stitch sequence, making our way all the way around. Slip stitch into that chain space, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so our single crochet row is all finished up. The next thing we're going to do is make a chain the length that we want our turtleneck to be, keeping in mind that it does need to fold in half as well. So I actually want my turtleneck in total to be about 9 inches or 24 centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 30. Now that we have our chain, we're going to do a slip stitch row, making our way all the way down our chain. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain 1. Now into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So how we do that is insert our hook into that second chain. Once we have those two loops in our hook, all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And a really quick tip is once we finish a slip stitch stitch, make sure that we're not tugging too tightly on our working yarn, otherwise the following row could be really tight to work into. So let's get this started again. Insert your hook into that following chain, yarn over, pull through everything, insert your hook into that following chain again, yarn over and pull through everything. And continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. So now that we've made our way all the way down with our slip stitch row, we do need to connect it into the base. 
So what we're going to do is find that next available stitch and slip stitch into there. And now this first row is all closed off. And now we're going to need to work our way up to the next row. So just slip stitch up that following stitch into the base and then flip our work. And now we're going to be doing back loop slip stitches, making our way all the way down. So we're going to find that last stitch from our previous row, insert our hook in through that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. And all we're going to do is yarn over, pull through everything. And let's do that once more into that following back loop, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through and continue to do this until you reach the end of the row. Now that we're at the end of the row, just to work our way up to the next row, since we're along the outside, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. So insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, yarn over, pull through everything, and continue to do this until we reach the base. And then I want to remind you guys how we're going to connect it into the base just once more. So now that we've made our way all the way down with our back loop slip stitches, just to remind you guys, we're going to be connecting it into the base by finding that next available stitch, slip stitching into there to close off this row, and then just to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch up that next stitch, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And from here, just keep repeating these two rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, and then I'll meet you back so we can seam everything together. Alright, so we have just made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base, and now we're ready to seam it together. Now for this turtleneck, we're going to be doing an outside loop slip stitch seam. So we're first going to want to make sure that our work is slipped right side out. And then we're all going to start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel. And we're going to insert only in through that front loop. And then we're going to find that first stitch into the back panel, inserting only into that back loop, and then when we have those three loops at our hook, we're going to yarn over and pull through all three. Let's do this again. Into that next stitch, into the front panel, insert only into that front loop, and then into the back panel, insert your hook only into that back loop, yarn over, pull through, and let's just do one more. Into that next stitch, into the front panel, insert into that front loop or the loop that's nearest to us. And then into the back panel, insert into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us and slip stitch through. Continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are back and our turtleneck is all finished. Now that that's all done, the next thing we're gonna do is get started on our bottom band. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that our work is flipped right side out. We're going to insert our hook into any one of our bottom rows that we have along the bottom of our piece. Insert our yarn onto our hook and pull through. And now right here we do need to cinch our bottom band. So we're going to single crochet all the way around just putting one single crochet into every side row. So let's get that started. Now this is my first side row right here. It's a side herringbone stitch row. But if yours is a side double crochet row that's completely fine too. Just insert your hook into the top of that side row with just one single crochet. And let's do the next one. This is my next side row, which for me is another side herringbone stitch row. So I'm just gonna find that top loop and then insert with one single crochet. And then just to do the following row, which is a double crochet for me, just find that top loop and single crochet once. And continue to do this, making our way all the way around and slip stitch into that chain space. So now that our single crochet row along the bottom of our piece is all finished up, the next thing we're gonna start doing is work on the length of our bottom band. Now, from here we're gonna be making a chain the length that we want it to be, and I want mine to be just about three inches or eight centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain of 10. Now our bottom band is going to be done exactly the same way that we did the turtleneck, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it really quickly. But now that we have our chain, we're just going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, 
you're going to insert with a slip stitch, making sure that we're not tugging too tightly after we finish every stitch. And from here, put one slip stitch into every chain. And now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we're just going to connect it into the base. So just find that next available stitch into the base, slip stitch into there to close off this row, and then just to work our way up to the next row, which is another back loop slip stitch row, slip stitch up that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And that's it. At the end of the row, just do a chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. And then we're just going to keep repeating those two rows with no increases and no decreases until we run out of stitches into the base. And then I'll meet you back to show you how we're going to seam it together. All right, so now that we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows, we don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam it together. Now this is going to be seamed the same exact way that we seamed our turtleneck, so I'm just going to do the first few with you guys. We first want to make sure that our work is flipped right side out. Then we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. And from there we're going to yarn over, pull through everything, and now let's do our outside loop slip stitch seam. So start by inserting your hook into that first available stitch into the front panel, and then into that next available stitch into the back panel. And then from there we should have three loops on our hook, so yarn over, and pull through all three. And that's it. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left, and then do a chain up of one and cut. Alright, so now that our bottom band is all finished up, the last thing we're going to have to do is single crochet along the bottom of our sleeve just to clean it up. So we do want to make sure that our work is slipped right side out, and we're going to insert our hook into any one of the side rows along the edge of our sleeve. And all we're going to do is insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and from here we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side herringbone stitch row, and then two single crochet into every side double crochet row. So just to do the first one, the first side row that I have right here is a side herringbone stitch row, so I'm going to insert my hook into there with just one single crochet. Now my next side row that I have right here is another herringbone stitch row, so I'm going to insert my hook into there. And then my next side row is the side double crochet, so I'm going to insert my hook into there with two single crochets. So there is one, and then there is two. We're going to maintain doing the stitch sequence, making our way all the way around, and then slip stitch into that chain space. So now that we've made our way all the way around with our first single crochet row, we're just going to finish off this with a back loop single crochet row, and then repeat everything we just did here on the other side. So we just slip stitch to close up this row. So all we're going to do is chain one, and then working in the same direction that we were just working in, we're going to find that first stitch's back loop. Insert your hook with one single crochet, and that's it. Continue to put one back loop single crochet into every stitch, slip stitch into that chain space, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything we just did here on this side on the other side. Alright, so the single crochet rows are all finished up along both of our sleeves and we are all done. The last thing we're going to have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it guys, we are all done. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter, those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye!